In this video, we'll take a big picture look at some of the technologies and options and methods for implementing virtual private networks. So let's start off with a few problems and then we'll identify how virtual private networks can solve them. Let's imagine over here on this side, this represents our corporate headquarters. And let's imagine that over here, this represents a remote site. So we'll call this branch one. And let's imagine they're also separated by either several miles or several hundred miles, but they both have connectivity to the internet. So I'll draw that in here. And let's further imagine that this computer right here needs access to some resource over here at corporate. So we'll call this uh, computer C, and it needs access to some server or some resource over here at corporate headquarters. Now, if the traffic from computer C goes through the firewall and goes over the internet without any type of protection or encryption, anybody on the internet can eavesdrop on that and possibly manipulate the data or see the data. In either case, the internet is a dangerous place. We don't want to send important data back and forth unprotected or unencrypted. And here's how a VPN, a virtual private network, can solve that. We can go ahead and train Firewall 1 and Firewall 4 to be buddies. And we can train them to create this logical tunnel. Now there could be, in my lab environment, these are both connected to the same network of 2312, but these could be anywhere that's reachable across the internet. And then logically, these guys could create this logical tunnel and then any traffic that they send from this network at corporate headquarters, which goes over to branch one, would then be encrypted by firewall one, sent over, firewall four could decrypt it, and then forward it on to the final destination. So the end devices, like PCs and servers over here, and devices over here, they don't really know or care that there was encryption going on over the internet. However, as administrators, we care and we know because we actually train the firewalls to build this virtual private network between firewall one and firewall four. And so in this implementation, this is referred to as a site to site virtual private network. As far as the protocols and methods we're using to build this site-to-site -site VPN, for site-to-site -site VPN tunnels, the primary protocol that's used is called IPsec. So IPsec is a framework. It's not just one protocol. It's a suite of protocols. And over time, as new protocols come into play and they're being adopted, they will also fall under the umbrella of IPsec. So IPsec has been around for decades. It will continue to be around. And again, this is the technology that's used for implementing site-to-site -site VPNs to protect traffic from corporate headquarters going to the branch one to also protect traffic from branch one as it goes over to corporate headquarters. So let me clear that off. And let me make a note that one type of virtual private network is site to site. Next, let's imagine a user who normally works at corporate headquarters goes home and they then need to access resources here at corporate headquarters. Once again, we have the problem, if this user is at home and they're sending traffic over the public internet, it's not secure, it's not safe, it's not private. So once again, we can leverage VPNs and build a VPN from this computer over to the corporate site. So that VPN would logically look like this. And any traffic that either goes into this VPN tunnel here and then exits here, or traffic coming back to the client that enters the VPN tunnel here and exits here, all that traffic going back and forth would be protected and encrypted. So anybody who's eavesdropping on the internet wouldn't be able to make sense of the data unless they had the ability to decrypt that data, which in this case would only be this computer and the firewall who's acting at the head end as the other endpoint of our remote access VPN tunnel. And that brings me to my next point regarding what this is called. It is referred to as a remote access, sometimes abbreviated as RA, virtual private network. And that's the two main categories for corporations today is site to site VPNs between two sites. And the other type is the remote access that we're describing right here. Also, let me jot down the technologies that are being used. So for site to site, we're almost exclusively going to use IPsec. However, for remote access, we have a few options. We can also use IPsec. There's options for that as well for the VPN tunnel between this client and the actual headquarters site. But we also have an option of using SSL slash TLS as another option for building that tunnel. And if we're using SSL slash TLS, we also have a few options within that regarding remote access VPNs. One would be to use effectively a browser on the computer because most people have browsers and using a browser or no other software because the browser supports SSL slash TLS. Using the browser, we could connect to this firewall securely and then over that SSL slash TLS connection, which is encrypted and secure, we could then have this client access some basic resources on the corporate network over the VPN. However, using browser-based, sometimes it's referred to as web-based, is very limited because it feels from this client's perspective, you feel like you have a window into the world over here. It doesn't feel like this device is literally on the network and able to fully interact with everything. And the primary reason for that is we're accessing everything through like a portal or through a browser. It's not really like we're living on the network. 
So the question may arise, well, what other options do we have? The other option is to use some software that's acting as a client that's running on this computer. That client software acting as an endpoint for the VPN tunnel can then work with the head-end device, and that can give us the benefits of a full tunnel, which at the end of the day, it makes this computer feel like it's directly connected to this network or directly connected to a network at the corporate headquarters. So anything a computer that is sitting on this corporate network can do, a remote access VPN that's running a software client can do the same things right here. And let me clean some of that up. And if we have the software client installed and running on this computer, not only can we use SSL and have effectively a full tunnel that goes to this corporate headquarters, we could also, if we wanted to, use IPsec. Because we have the software client that can use either SSL as the VPN mechanism or IPsec. And at the end of the day, whether we're using IPsec with the client or we're using SSL slash TLS with the client, the functionality is pretty much the same, which is the ability to make this computer look, feel, and seem as if it's on this internal network. When in reality, all the traffic that's leaving this computer that's destined for the corporate network is being protected over the VPN tunnel. Again, whether we're using IPsec or SSL, the goal is to encrypt the traffic so anybody who's eavesdropping or trying to modify that data won't be successful because they don't have the keys to unlock that data. So let me clean some of that up. And let's talk just for a moment about IPsec. Behind the scenes, when IPsec is building a tunnel, and that could include with the client software, a VPN with remote access, or a site-to-site -site VPN tunnel, either way, it's going to use UDP port 500 for the negotiation and the setup of the initial connection between the two devices. Again, those two devices could be the client software running here on the client machine, that's part of the VPN tunnel going to the headquarters site with the remote access, or it could be part of a site-to-site -site VPN. And then once they get the ball rolling, they'll set up the full literal IPsec tunnel, which uses protocol 50, and the protocol is called ESP, Encapsulating Security Payload. Also with IPsec, there's a couple flavors. There's Ike, which stands for Internet Key Exchange version 1, there's Ike version 2, and depending on which flavor you're using, there's different phases to the setup and initiation of the IPsec tunnels. And 20 years ago, when I was first learning about IPsec and site-to-site -site VPNs, it was really important to know the nitty-gritty details about each and every aspect because we had so much troubleshooting to do back in the day. However, currently, with most next-generation firewalls and most client software that's running, the vendors are now making it very, very easy to implement the IPsec without having to know all the details behind the scenes about how IPsec operates. Also, with IPsec, there are several elements that need to be agreed upon by both parties as part of the IPsec tunnel. And the way I like to remember that is haggle. Like, hey, let's haggle over this, let's haggle over that. And that would include the hashing and something called the Diffie-Hellman group. I'll put that here in parentheses. And the lifetime, for example, how long is the tunnel going to stay up? The authentication, which means how are these two devices with a site-to-site -site tunnel or the client and the firewall with a remote access VPN, how are they going to prove to each other that they are who they say they are? And the options for authentication would include a pre-shared key. There's also an option for digital certificates. And in addition to that, if we're using remote access VPNs, in addition to just having the authentication down for the IPsec tunnel, there's also additional authentication called XAuth, which is going to ask the user, hey, who the heck are you? And that way the tunnel can be established and we can also verify who the user is sitting at that computer behind the tunnel. And the E down here is for what type of encryption algorithm as part of IPsec are we going to use? And today we're using several different flavors of AES, which stands for the Advanced Encryption Standard. In the old days, we used things like DES, and then a little better than that was Triple DES. But now with IPsec, the primary option is AES, and there's various flavors of that, including 128, 192, 256. And generally speaking, with cryptography, the more bits you have involved, the bigger numbers you have involved, the more secure the tunnel is. However, also just realize that if you have thousands and thousands of VPNs, bigger numbers don't just mean better encryption, but it also means more CPU intensive operations on the device. So if we have a firewall that's supporting 10,000 remote access VPNs, we may want to keep an eye on that. If it gets too busy, we may want to dial it down to a less intensive, but still secure option for advanced encryption standard. So that, my friend, is the overview regarding VPN support with site-to-site -site and remote access VPNs with the FortiGate. And what you and I get to do in these videos is we're going to walk through most of these scenarios. We'll walk through, first of all, doing a site-to-site -site VPN with IPsec, and then we'll take a look at setting up remote access, first with web-based, and then tunnel mode using a client using SSL slash TLS, and then remote access using IPsec. So in preparation for doing our site-to-site -site VPN, in the next video, let's put a plan together so that we know exactly what we intend to do. And as we proceed, we'll implement that plan and verify it 
for our IPsec site-to-site -site VPNs. So I'll see you, my friend, for our next video where we'll plan out the site-to-site -site VPN. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Hey, thanks for watching and subscribe right here to get the latest information from CBT Nuggets. And if you're new to or considering a career in the world of IT, head on over to CBT Nuggets and sign up for a free trial.